Thousands of SAFTU members across the country marched against the government's proposed minimum wage today. But Labour Minister Mildred Oliphant has slammed SAFTU for misleading workers. She says in the auto sector, they have agreed that workers should be paid 21 rand 90 cents per hour. For more on this, we're now joined by economist Sam Rowland, Moleko Pagedi from the South African Federation of Trade Unions, and Matthew Sparks from Corsatu. Let me start with you, um, Sam, if I may. What did you make of uh, today's strike? Um, I think it's, it's an interesting occurrence, especially when you consider um, the announcement by President Ramaphosa of a strong investment drive to bring in much needed investment into the country um, following the past two years of very stagnant growth in investment. And uh, I think this certainly sends a message um, to, to the players in the economy that they need to consider all factors when you're considering uh, bringing in extra investment into the country. Well, the workers have been complaining for years now. They are the ones uh, who are being asked to tighten their belts when, in fact, uh, when you look at the salaries of executives, um, no such things get said. Sure. I mean, I think in the past two years we've seen a particularly uh, difficult situation for the, the poorest of the poor and, the, and uh, workers in uh, the kind of manufacturing sector, um, especially when we consider commodity prices are, are, are strong drivers of um, strong drivers of output in the economy. When we see commodity prices go down, uh, it's unfortunately the case that, that uh, those sort of jobs are the first to get cut. And it's, it's an unfortunate structure of our economy. And I think it's one that goes back historically quite far back. Muleko Pagedi, you guys should have been a lot more considerate. You should have thought about uh, the impact that this may have on the economy. No, we, uh, that we, we did had uh, a serious amount of consideration on what this would have on the lives of an ordinary working person, his or her family, that uh, depends on that person, and what it means for the future of South African workers. What we know, as a matter of fact, is that we cannot continue with the situation as it is. And the national minimum wage presents itself as a very important instrument that will bring about the desired change in their lives. Therefore, to pitch it at such an absurdly low level is to insult workers. You would appreciate the fact that the South African capital is sitting on treasure and treasures of money and they are not investing, even before this particular uh, industrial action that we had or protest action that we had. You would appreciate that uh, the government have been running around the world, world uh, lobbying foreign investors. Those investors, with greatest respect, have not been of any material benefits to the ordinary working people and the working class at the large within the republic. You would appreciate that the SAFTU have been very much uh, vocal and making a number of submissions in this particular regard. And it will be unfortunate if we have to now be told to be as considerate as we have always been with regard to the state of the economy. The economy is in the crisis not by the makings of workers but by poor, in our view, poor macro policy economic decisions, by the unnecessary instability within government and the state, level of corruption, maladministration. So you cannot blame workers when they demand their rightfully entitled uh, minimum wage uh, for such a devastating situation in our economy. It's not by their own cause. Matthew Parks, why did you not join today's strike? Look, SAFT has got the right to strike. We live in a democratic state. Anyone has the right to strike about anything they want, whether we agree or disagree. But for us, we can't support the strike because why would we strike against huge achievements for workers? Workers have been struggling for a minimum wage for decades. The Freedom Charter in 1955 said there should be a national minimum wage. We are on the cusp of achieving it. It's going to see the wages of workers, 6 million workers, 47% of our workforce, going up. It's going to benefit retail workers, hospitality, domestic, farm, agricultural workers. It's a major achievement. So it's unfortunate that some people in the DA, in the EFF, in SAF2, big business are attacking it. That's their right, but we can't support it. This is going to benefit workers. It'll put money in their pockets. It'll put money on their tables, help them to take care of their families, and stimulate local economic growth. It's an historic occasion. 
And I think it's important to note that the majority of unions are part of supporting it. That's COSATU, that's FEDUSA, that's NACTU. It's unfortunate that SAFTU has chosen to sit out, but again, that's the democratic right that they chose. Well, it's interesting, um, uh, Muleko, I don't know if you heard the words um, that Matthew was using, huge, major achievements. Um, and obviously, you don't share that. You think the opposite of that. Now, uh, Matthew, my dear brother, is exaggerating. With greatest respect, the proposed minimum wage will bring no difference that will be sustained in the life of those workers that he refers to. He should be telling you that the proposed minimum wage level falls below the minimum living levels currently as they are. He should tell you about the main purpose of introducing a national minimum wage as an instrument that will break what we believe is an apartheid wage structure that find its roots from your slave wage that you earned during colonial times. A wage structure that is based on gender and it was based on race. That have brought about the situation we are seated here today. Matthew should also come to the realization that they suddenly became so uh, uh, absorbed into introducing a national minimum wage on the eve of a political conference of a certain party. That, in our view, was just conveniently a matter of giving <coughs> a certain candidate an advantage, probably, towards ensuring that they are able to back that candidate at the expense of workers. Well, Those workers that he refers to, he must be quite clear, the farm workers, the domestic workers, and the EPW workers are excluded from this 20 rand minimum wage, as it is. We don't share that particular view. Well, the, the minister, the minister of, of labor, national minimum wage is to take us out of poverty and to address the high level of inequalities. Well, the minister of labor suggests, and it's not she didn't use that word, but uh, she does say as much that you are hypocrites because some of your members in the auto sector have agreed that workers should be paid 21 rand 90 per hour. Mm. That, that's, that's so unfortunate and it's regrettable that a minister would not comprehend with the understanding of the purpose of introducing a national minimum wage. This is not a sectoral minimum wage. Probably that's the issue that we should clarify to the minister. This is a national minimum wage and it's a legislation that her department will have to ensure that is enforced. She has been failing dismally to bring about enforcement of applicable <coughs> labor laws to this date. He has not been able to come through and make sure that workers who would have benefited on those introduced pieces of legislation will benefit. It is regrettable that she articulated such a particular view. But so far as we are concerned, individual unions bargain with individual employers at sectoral level, and they agree based on circumstances that are associated with the process of collective bargaining. We are not necessarily in such a process here. In this regard, we are trying to introduce a national minimum wage, which is a product of the 1955 Freedom Charter, which her organization has adopted. We are in the process of trying to break the poverty line that most of our people are subjected to. The very same workers. We can't make poverty a law in the republic. We can't make inequality a law in the republic. Brazil implemented the national minimum. You will agree with me, Pax. The, the Brazil introduced the national minimum wage, addressed level of poverty, and ensured that there are levels of inequality are addressed. The same applies to Argentina, <coughs> West in the case of uh, the Germany. We are now an, an equal society in the whole world as South Africa. This is the, in our view, instrument that will bring about the necessary changes and impact positively in the lives of workers. Matthew Parks, do you agree? Look, Malek is my good comrade and friend. I'm glad to see him, but unfortunately, we can't agree. This has got nothing to do with, with the December Congress of the ANC. The Congress took place in December. We've been having in-depth, detailed negotiations since 2015. It's unfortunate that SAFTA has chosen to isolate itself, not to participate in the processes, or to forget to make submissions, etc. We need to distinguish between a minimum wage, which this is, and a living wage, which is much higher. This is a platform to campaign for the next f phase of struggle, which is towards a living wage, a social wage, etc. But I think for you, it's also important to expose the hypocrisy of SAFTU. NUMSA accepts 17 rand an hour in the fuel sector. SAFTU says they want a minimum wage of 12,500 rand a month. Yet they cannot show us a single part of their sectors where they have achieved that. So it's fine to take any figure out of the sky, not based upon the economic reality of a country where one out of three workers is unemployed, where thousands of workers are losing their jobs on a daily basis 
We can give false hopes. We can give slogans to say we'll achieve a minimum wage of 12,500 rand. Is Show that, us is which that, domestic worker will be employed afterwards. Is that one of your key reasons? The fact that uh, if you were, for example, to do what SAFTU is doing, then your members may lose their jobs. No, look, we have to balance it. Our initial proposal was Kosato, Fedusa, Naktu, was 26 rand an hour based upon academic, actual academic research, not pamphlets. Business was proposing 11 rand an hour. The fact that we were able to push them up towards 20 rand an hour is an achievement. You can't put the minimum wage too low to be the level of farm workers or domestic workers because then it would be meaningless. It has to be high enough to be an income generator for the poorest of the poor. We have to make certain compromises in negotiations. So hence farm and domestic workers are pegged at a 90%, 75% level for two years for them to catch up. And negotiations are give and take. But overall, the fact, Vuyo, that this will be an increase for 6 million workers, for 47% of the workforce, is an achievement. It's, it's based upon what we've seen in Brazil, in Germany, in the US. And we should really be celebrating that we're taking work workers a step forward. We're not going to achieve socialism in one night, no matter how many pamphlets we might issue. So it's one step at a time. It's hard, grueling work but we're making progress, and it's going to happen with or without the critics. It's unfortunate that SAFTU has chosen to miss this boat. And I think, Vuyo, we should ask, why does SAFTU apply to join NEDLAC a year after the negotiations has concluded in NEDLAC? Why did they not participate in the Department of Labor public consultations last year and this year? Why did they submit their submission to Parliament two and a half weeks late? If this issue is so important to SAFTU's leadership, why have they been sleeping on their job time and time again? It's really a disservice they're doing to their members Ch for you. Well, well before I bring in uh, uh, Assem, do you want to answer that question, no, no, Muleko? No. Those questions, in fact. Yes, Tatu. I mean, December 2016, SAFTU filed a referral to NEDLEC advancing three main demands. The first demand was the national minimum wage. The second demand was the jobs and the economy. The third demand was the issue that has to do with the crisis we have in our education system. For whatever reason, NEDLEC prolonged our referral up to a point where we even threatened them with legal actions. We only got our certificate last year. They themselves cause to file a referral in July. Sometime in August they get that. They hold something that they wanted to call a match. I don't know what we call it, but we believe it was just a demonstration of power and the influence they believe they had. Regrettably, they did nothing much. We were submitted as SAF2 during the opening window. We went to parliament. We made our submission. We demanded for more time to be created such that we can have more thorough engagement on this issue. There is no hypocrisy on the part of SAFTU, NUMSA, whatsoever. This is not a sectoral minimum wage. Because SAFTU must understand this is a national legislation that is going to be applicable across the board. And they cannot bring inference of a certain collective agreement entered into by one of our unions and say, on the basis <laughs> of an agreement entered into by NUMSA, why should we have now 20 rand? There are a number of... Uh, uh, collective agreement that exists. We are just to make a point clear. You know what COSA did and they are not saying this, Pax. Pax, at the point where the levels were discussed, they themselves agreed that they will put in place a team of experts. And those team experts came with this number. They pushed this number down the throats of workers. It was not necessarily even COSA number. Pax would agree with me that COSA at some point proposed 6,000 and they were willing to settle for 4,500 rand. What then gave rise to them to accept a 3,500 rand? Unless if it's a conveniency, politically in our view, their defense and support of this particular 3,500 is informed by nothing. Their own members are against this 3,500, are against the 20 rand. For that matter, we call them to support us to take this issue up. We have managed to push back. The implementation date, had it not been for SAFTU, it would have been implemented at go. Credit must be given to the leadership of SAFTU, its affiliate, and the members in their numbers that came out today to demonstrate the uh, rejection of this national minimum wage and the amendment bills that they have agreed to <coughs> so at the NEDLEC setup. Sembo we as SAFTU understand the process of NEDLEC, uh, we applied to be a member at NEDLEC. These three uh, federations are blocking us 
to be a member party of that network. They have okay. adopted a certain subjective, in our view, an unfair provision that demands of us to submit something that, they, in our view, somewhat came about into existence in a very suspicious manner. Okay, but we know a, it was deliberate. Okay, that's Secondly, we understand that like processes. We can file a referral at any given time. They were the ones who were attacking us unprovoked when we said come and support this particular course of action. I well, don't know well, what they have to say about the successful events well, if that today's, we well, throughout if, the country. Today. Well, if today's protests are anything to go by, you've been attacking them. Mm. Uh, um, too, you know, you haven't you haven't spared them. But I just want um, to bring in Sam Rowland now for a second. Uh, Sam, it is a fact that um, you know workers has been have been suffering for 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 quite um, a while. How do we ensure that what has already been negotiated and even <clears throat> what SAFTU is asking for is actually taken forward? Um, how do we do that? I, I think firstly we need to also understand the difference between the minimum wage and a living wage. Uh, I think there's an acceptance. I think there's an acceptance. Yes, no, sure. That uh, there, there, is, there is a difference. No, and but I don't think, uh, um, um, so I think SAFTU is within their rights yeah, to yeah. actually campaign for what they believe needs to happen and needs to happen now. I don't yes, think yes. that right should be taken away um, from them. But the yes. question is how do we? all of us from our respective uh, corners do the right thing to make sure that workers are not shortchanged at the altar of profits. Well, I mean, I think that we, we need to understand uh, the balance that exists between the minimum wage. Um, if it is too low, it is, is it not going to lift anyone out of poverty? If it's too high, um, it makes something like our exports uncompetitive. And we've seen in many cases across the globe, for example, in Australia with their automotive sector, uncompetitive labor costs uh, led to the closure of the Australian automotive sector. So we, going forward, we need to bear in mind that uh, the national minimum wage, remember, it is a wage floor. It, it isn't necessarily binding, and it allows for uh, firms to, to pay a higher value than that. It just says that we are placing a sort of safety net for workers. But uh, to understand going forward, a lot of our, uh, a lot of our exports are commodity-driven, so for example, mining, agriculture exports, and they really much depend on um, the price of, of our raw exports. Um, so to go forward, uh, we need to get the sectors growing, firstly, to allow greater profits to be drawn. We also need uh, a lot more political, and cert uh, political certainty, and that can firstly, I think, start with finalizing but, but, but the mining political, charter. But political certainty has been an issue for yep. uh, the longest time. Every yes. time mm. business uh, you know, uh, wants to put forward some reason as to why they are not investing or reinvesting in the economy, yep. they cite um, this, this same issue, irrespective of uh, who is in charge. Again, there's a lot of reliance on anecdotes, what happens in Australia, but no one is supporting, for instance, thorough, proper research that we will own as a country that says this is what is right or wrong with what we are doing. Isn't that where we should be going? Instead of finding fault in uh, whether SAFTU is right to protest or whether uh, COSATU is right not to mm. support. Sure, I think ultimately, you know, we live in a, a global economy. Um, it's important to realize that we don't make uh, enough goods for the domestic economy. And as a result, unfortunately, the fact of the matter is we do need to compete with the rest of the world. Uh, and that means that there are certain constraints to the price of our, our goods. And, and that is a function of labor inputs. Um, as you, I agree with you, political, uncer mm. political uncertainty has certainly been a trademark of the past uh, four or five years. Uh, going forward, I think uh, the way forward is, is further, nego further agreement, further collaboration between business and labor. And unfortunately, none can, one cannot work without the other. Um, and I agree with you, you know, <clears throat> looking at it in, in the greater context of the global economy, ultimately, um, labor does need to come to the party, and as does business. Uh, Matthew Parks, um, we are running out of time. One of the issues that uh, uh, SAFTU is raising is its net lag, uh, membership and what uh, by implication is, your, uh, is you uh, well, <laughs> being complicit in them being kept out. Briefly? Sure, sure. Look, I mean, again, SAFTU is kind of engaging in hysterical exaggerations. NEDLAC has been in existence for since 1995. There's been criteria for trade union federations to join. Those are based upon the Department of Labor's registration requirements for trade unions. That's audited financial statements, verified membership figures. Those have been there for years. 
We've simply asked them to provide that. The difficult software is that they submit incomplete applications. So what must we do? It's like going to the bank with an incomplete application for a home loan. It's okay. not the bank's fault if you don't submit it properly. But very briefly, let's, way, say let's, say you, you, let's say I take you. Let's say I take you. Let's say I take you on the two points. Let's say I take no. you on the two points. But what about the whole two-year thing? Not, Why prescribe a two-year uh, a period? Why would you support sure. that? Look, we don't want to have. A f no, the requirements have been there for years. We want to know legitimate organisations are there, not just fly by night organizations. You've got about 200 unions in the country. Many of them pop up and disappear. We're on stable organizations and we've said just come and bring us your documents. By the way, as well as Zimavavi was a general secretary of Kosatu when a previous federation called Konsawu applied to join NEDLAC wasn't accepted because his membership was too low. Now it's strange that the same general secretary of another federation no. is now crying about spill, sp spilt milk. Okay, let's let's bring in Muleko quickly. Malik, Muleko, why 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 no, have you not uh, uh, done the right no, thing? No, uh, let's, uh, no uh, Matthew, Labour grouping, Fedusa Naktu Kosatu <laughs> introduced a new requirement that was not there. The two year is a new criteria that they have agreed to. We have demanded them to give us record of where that decision was taken. To this day, they have not done so. They did that deliberately knowing that SAFTU has not been in existence for a period of two years. We have got unions that have existed for more than 75 years. I'm from FAU originally. FAU have been in existence for a long time. The same applies to NUMS and other organizations. Every year, they okay. have been submitting their annual financial statement to the registrar. So this is a deliberate means to get rid of SAFTU okay. from the NEDLEC setup. Okay, Muleko. And and it can't be correct that uh, it is now perceived as soft is not. We have filed a complete uh, application. We have yeah. sent everything that NEDLEC is needed. Safe to say we are not able to give them <coughs> an audit financial statement. And we'll do this at the end of this, this particular month because okay. that will be the end of our financial Muleko, in, uh, in our existence. Muleko Pagedi, thank you. Thank you very much for talking to us. I must thank also Matthew thank you, thank Parks you, thank you. as thank you, well you, as Sam Rowland. Time flies when um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, have these heated and very important debates. <laughs>